Okay, so in module number one here, I really think it's important to lay a foundation for us to consider youth sports and recreation, because we can talk about how to effectively program in youth sports and recreation, but that is sort of operating in a vacuum if we don't also consider the environment in which we operate and the context in which we're situated. So the first thing I want to do here is really look at um, some of the information we have from research about who participates in organized sports. Now we can sort of look at the numbers very simply here. We can reduce it down to a total percentage, which I frankly do in the next part of this module. Um, and, and really what we see is about 60% of youth in this country participate in organized sport in some ca capacity. But I think when we really drill that down and look at what that means, we'll see that it's a far more complex interplay of social and cultural and economic forces that really dictate who gets to play and what type of opportunities they have. So let's think about this in, in context. Um, so if we look at high school girls in this country, about a quarter of high school girls who live in cities have never participated in an organized sport in their lives. And similarly, about 60% of girls from single family households have also not participated in organized sport. Girls simply across the country, regardless of their um, economic or demographic position, have less access to organized sports than do boys. In 31 states in this country, high schools can offer programming in sport to at least 50% of the boys enrolled in their schools. So that's how many, they have opportunity for 50% of the boys. There are only 18 states that have similar types of roster spots available for girls. Um, in addition to that, about 3.5 million schools are going to be eliminating school sports um, through the year 2020. That's, that's sort of the projection, largely because they can't afford them. Um, and when we see cuts to um, school sports, we oftentimes see them disproportionately impact girls. So we have gender on one hand, right? We also have economic factors that impact this um, and demographic factors and geographic factors. So there are kids that just live in the wrong place to participate in sports. So we'll look at an example like New York State. They have well-funded schools um, and they are supportive of physical activity generally um, in their state legislator. As a result, their school teams accommodate 75% of boys enrolled and 62% of girls that are enrolled in their schools across the, on average across the state. But if you look at states that are um, have different budget allocations and are more budget deprived, frankly, for example, California and Florida, um, we see that in California, they only have spots on teams for 29% of girls and 39% of boys. And in Florida, they have roster spots for 23% of the girls at their school and 30% of boys on average. So that's like state by state basis. And then when you drill that down even further and you look for kids who live in urban cities, you'll see that opportunities for sport are even fewer. In Washington, D.C., high schools had positions on their teams for only 22% of girls and 33% of boys, which is about one third of the opportunities that we see in New York. When we consider all of this in the context of Southeast Michigan, where Wayne State University is located, I think we can see some additional unique challenges. We sort of have a microcosm here of the larger country because we have urban and suburban and rural communities that all exist within Southeast Michigan. We have very diverse population um, and we have a, a wide range of socioeconomic um, standards, not only in individual households and individual communities, but also in the cities themselves. So when we consider this, um, the youth sports and recreation landscape in Southeast Michigan, we know from the State of Play report from the Aspen Institute, which you'll review as part of this module, that the average young person in Southeast Michigan plays 1.7 sports over the course of the year, at least 12 times throughout the year. African American youth play the fewest number of sports, but I think interesting strides have been made by connecting active students with more non-traditional sports, like archery, for example, has become one of the fastest growing school-sponsored sports in the state, thanks in large part to the investment made in archery by the Michigan Department of Natural Resources. 
So I also think that we um, see some additional challenges here in Southeast Michigan because of the weather and a lack of year-round waterproof, weatherproof facilities makes um, access to new sports sometimes challenging for kids in this area. Um, there are really limited um, facilities that can host indoor long sport, or long field um, sports like soccer, um, flag football, or traditional tackle football. Um, and although we have gyms, it's difficult to play those types of sports all year round. And then lastly, here in Southeast Michigan, um, sort of the long-term economic decline has really posed some additional significant challenges to running um, recreation programs and leagues sponsored by municipalities like community recreation types of programs. Um, many recreation centers in Detroit and the metro Detroit area have closed since the early 2000s. And um, in Detroit, 50 city parks were slated to close um, by 2013, before they were saved by some private partnerships, community and private partnerships. So um, they have looked at leasing some of its park facilities, um, including Belle Isle, which is one of the most famous Detroit parks, to other entities who manage and maintain them. And then we look at Programs that are outside of the city of Detroit in places like Ypsilanti, Pontiac, Wayne Westland um, that have also fared not much better than the city of Detroit has in that they have um, looked, they stopped offering municipal recreation types of programs and community supported youth sports um, organizations. But in their place, a lot of nonprofit and even for profit um, organizations have taken over providing. Um, sports opportunities for kids. And there are some additional public-private partnerships um, in facility um, ownership and, and running facilities that have made some additional positive impacts. So I think that Detroit is a really, Metro Detroit, is a really interesting dichotomy of what's happening in the youth sport and recreation um, culture across the country because we face a number of problems that are not unique, but maybe unique in the combination um, of which we face them here in Southeast Michigan.